Hello, and welcome to a stat quickie. Today we're going to talk about Fisher's exact test and enrichment analysis. But first, let's eat some M&Ms. I want to share some with my friends, so I just take one handful and get seven blue and one red. What does this say about the distribution of colors in the bag? Do I have more blues than normal? Lastly, can I calculate a p-value from this delicious sample? This bag's supposed to have two servings, and I think a serving of M&Ms is 20 M&Ms, so there must be 40 M&Ms in the bag. I looked up the proportions of the different colors of M&Ms on the internet, and this is what I found. So on the right, we have a histogram of an idealized bag of M&Ms. I'm going to use the histogram of the ideal bag of M&Ms based on the proportions I got off the internet and my sample, my handful of M&Ms, to determine if my bag is special. In this example, I don't care about the order of how the M&Ms fell into my hand, so let's consider every possible ordering of seven blue and one red as legit. Let's start by calculating the probability of getting seven blue M&Ms followed by a single red M&M. The probability that the first M&M is blue equals eight divided by 40. Eight, because there are eight blue M&Ms, divided by 40, because there are 40 M&Ms total. Now that I've got one M&M in my hand, there are only seven blue M&Ms left in the bag. The probability that the second M&M is blue equals seven divided by 39. Seven, because there are now only seven blue M&Ms in the bag, divided by 39, because there are only 39 M&Ms. Now there are only six blue M&Ms left in the bag. The probability of getting a third blue M&M is 6 over 38, leaving 5 blue M&Ms left in the bag. And by now, you've probably grasped the pattern for how we determine the probabilities for getting a sequence of blue M&Ms. Once we have calculated the probabilities for getting 7 blue M&Ms in our hand, we can now calculate the probability of getting 1 red M&M. That's just 5 over 33. 5, because there are 5 red M&Ms, divided by 33, because there are 33 M&Ms left in the bag at this point. Now, just multiply all those probabilities together to get the probability of getting 7 blues followed by 1 red. And that just equals a really small number. That's rare, but remember, we don't care about order. There's more work to do to get the probability of seven blues and one red in any order. To calculate the probability of getting seven blues and one red, we have to add together the probabilities of each possible ordering. The good news is that the process of calculating the probabilities is the same as what we just did. Good thing we have computers, because they'll do the work for us. Anyways, the probability is still really small. Now what's the p-value? If you'll remember from the p-value stat quest, sometimes you can have very small probabilities, but really large p-values. And remember, a p-value is the sum of the probabilities of all things equally rare or rarer. This is all covered in the stat quest on p-values. So that includes adding the probability of getting eight blues in a row, or seven oranges and one blue, because that's equally rare. And actually, there are a lot of different ways you can come up with things that are equally rare or rarer. Too many to put on this stack quickie, so we're just gonna skip to the chase. Again, good thing we have computers. The p-value ends up being 0 0.01, so my bag is special, hooray! We just performed Fisher's exact test on the M&Ms. Enrichment for other things, like does this list of genes have more involved in metabolism than normal, is done the exact same way. And for any of you stack questers that use R, 
a programming language for doing statistics, I provided the R code for doing the Fisher's exact test that we performed on the M&Ms in the description below. Hooray! Tune in next week for another stat quickie.